COVID-19 has affected every single one of us in a variety of ways. In farming, some sectors have fared worse than others, none more so than oyster farming. South Galway Bay is home to a number of oyster farmers who rely on this shellfish for their living. Ireland produces over 10,000 tonnes of oysters a year. 90% of this is exported around the world. But due to the coronavirus, oyster farmer Dermot Kelly's business was hit overnight. We saw the impacts of COVID, I'd say towards the end of January, early February. We supply out into uh, Switzerland and up into the Swiss Alps there and, and it really started closing down from then on. The main impact then was in Ireland, obviously, with the closing down of all the restaurants and the food service in the middle of March. It was just like someone switched off the light. You're left in the dark and you don't know what to do or where to go or, or what's going to happen. We're only selling like 30% of what we should normally be selling. People are just not eating oysters. And I think it's because they're not able to go to the restaurants and have them served up to them. Mussels and clams have improved. While we were on maybe 50%, we're back up now to 100% sale of our mussels and clams. And I think that's to do with people are, they perceive it's easier and they can go to the shop and pick up a kilo of mussels and bring them home and cook them themselves. Before COVID, where were you selling all these oysters? All over Ireland and uh, all over the world, really. So across to Canada, into the Middle East and into, uh, into Asia. Farmers like Dermot rely on daily passenger flights to deliver their live oysters around the world. There were no flights there for a number of uh, months and it's only now they're beginning to come back to a bit of normality. Kelly Oysters is a family business run by Dermot and his brother Miho. It employs their wives and five other staff. We've been in a fortunate position that we haven't had to lay anybody off. Thankfully the government supports have been allowed us to keep everybody on at the moment. Uh, hopefully that will remain and that, that situation won't change. Kelly's work with 10 other local farmers who grow their oysters from seed for two years before moving them onto Kelly's farm for their last year of growth. They usually sell 100 tonnes of oysters a year, but because of the coronavirus, some of this stock is still on site. So normally you would sell them in and around, is it three years of age? Yeah, that'd be two and a half to three years would be there. Is there a good time for selling the oysters that they're, they're the right size. So this essentially is like a big holding place until you can find those new markets. Yeah they're feeding away here all the time and they're getting bigger. That's the, the only trouble. There's no there's no solution in keeping them at the at the right size. With the oysters continuing to grow they'll start to become too big for the market. It's a race against time for Mihol and Dermot. How long can you keep holding them here? Well, we'd be hoping that we'd have some of them sold by the end of the year anyway to try and to try and make room just to lighten down the stock and things. And if that doesn't happen? We're in trouble, I think. We will be in trouble. With oysters, bigger does not necessarily mean better quality. So this is what can happen if the oyster grows too big or too wild. I mean, our, our perfect oyster here, restaurant oyster, is, is this size here. Mm the essence of the ocean. It's just a phenomenal Great. range of flavours. There's more to this plight than just lost sales. There's a family legacy at stake too. My father started the business back in the early 50s. He, the wild oyster fishery is just outside us here and uh, all the local, there used to be up 200 beds fishing the wild native flat oyster. And your father very sadly passed away a few months ago. Yes, indeed. Sadly, we lost him in, in the middle of May, in the middle of, of all this. It gave us more time to be with him and care for him and look after him. But it, it also, he was aware of what was going on. And he said to me, sure, you don't need any help. You'll be fine. So we, we're fine. We'll manage. We'll, um, we'll manage. We'll keep it going. What is your prediction if things don't pass quickly? You're going to see a lot of the smaller oyster farmers dropping out of it. The guys that, are, that have it as a part-time operation. 
a lot of the oyster farms are in isolated areas and to, to keep those families in those areas, keep those schools, keep those post offices for the whole economy, it has a huge impact if they're not there. So it's vitally important that they need funding and support. The oyster sector's reliance on restaurants to buy their live shellfish means they are particularly exposed to the impacts of Covid. But how has the rest of the agri-food industry fared? At the height of the pandemic, cattle prices declined dramatically. Uh, there was big concern about whether um, the Irish milk industry would be able to process all the milk that farmers were, were producing. Thankfully, as the first wave of the pandemic passed, people were allowed to go back to eating in McDonald's in Ireland. Restaurants opened up throughout uh, Europe and in the UK. So beef prices recovered and milk prices have basically been quite stable through the course of the year because of international market demand factors. And for those farmers, particularly in the beef sector, who are marketing cattle at the height of the, pan the first wave when prices were really low, the government has actually introduced an exceptional aid measure that will compensate them for, for estimated losses that they would have incurred. If you want to understand what happens in the business you've been meeting in today and the farms in this kind of location in southeast Galway, you have to really think about the fact that 9 out of 10 cattle you see walking around are not going to be eaten ultimately by people on this island. They're going to be eaten by people on the island beside us or on the continent. So it really is what those consumers and how those societies are, are managing the pandemic and responding to it that will really determine the, the economic outlook for farmers in Ireland. Unfortunately, businesses like this business that depend on that export market will, will struggle. But Kelly's aren't going away anytime soon. They've decided to launch a new online farm gate business and sell direct into Irish homes. The Irish person themselves, they don't tend to eat that much shellfish, but it's something that they have improved on and that, that it's, it's a market that is going to grow. For the locals here, they can just order online and they come and collect it. And for anyone around Ireland, including the north of Ireland, can get a next day delivery of uh, our oysters and uh, mussels and clams. And your late father, what do you think he would think of this? He'd be so proud of it because that's what he, he wanted to, to get more people to eat shellfish and more people to eat oysters. And that was his, his game always.